okay. Stream quality is lower because internet connection is not fast enough. Uh oh. Hopefully that doesn't mean we have problems. Okay. Um, I just got a message something about my stream quality. So I don't know if our weather is going to be a cause and a problem today or not. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. We have some people joining. Hopefully you can hear me. Because, oh, I'm seeing. Okay, it's, it's working, I guess, <laughs> theoretically. Okay, Michelle from Colorado and Jane from Tennessee and Kimberly from, I think, Arizona, if I'm not mistaken. Sue from Melbourne. Mel from Melbourne is Australia, not Elbert, Australia. Melbourne. Excellent. So, can you hear me? I hear loves. I see loves, possibly. Hopefully, you can hear me. Been a crazy day. I'm exhausted. Hopefully, I don't look so tired. Um, I had the three day event in Denver this weekend. Oh, good. Michelle says she can hear me. So we'll call her, you can hear me in Colorado. <laughs> Hopefully it all works. Yay. Yay. Oh, Sandy from California. Joe Rita. Cat. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, happy, happy, happy. Okay. Huh. It's been a crazy getting ready back to work here. Um, I had three days of classes in Denver. Oh my gosh. They are responsible for today's live because I swear we must have had so many aha and oh my gosh and oh that it's so wicked cool and um, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. So uh, we it was a great, great class and um, any way I can increase the volume. Uh, mine's up as full as it can go. I, I don't know how to make it any louder than it's the same. It's the same as it's always been. So sorry. I don't, it, I'm going like on the red, which means I'm like squawking. I don't know how else to make it worse. Volume seems low, low. Well, I could always stop recording and not do this. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, let's see. I don't know what else to do guys. Um, I, anyway, I'm glad you guys are here. Hopefully you can hear if you got to turn me up loud. Sorry, I'll try talking louder, but, um, don't want to lose my voice. So we'll just make it quick and short. And then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So anyway, I'm not going to stress about it. Sorry guys. <laughs> it's, uh, um, glad that you guys could all join today. We are going to do some, um, name tags and they're name flakes. So they're like a snowflake, but they're with uh, names, which means I have some samples here and, um, oh good. Some people say the volume is fine from Denver, Illinois, Kathy from Denver, Indiana. Fantastic. Okay. 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 <laughs> Didn't mean to get everybody in a, in a hubbub here. Um, name flakes. Isn't this cute? This is what we did in class and anyone that was in class, um, in Denver, we just did this, when was this, Saturday? And I got home yesterday, last night, so I've been stitching up a storm today. These really don't take long to stitch. I haven't finished trimming this one yet. They don't take long to stitch, but are they fun? I mean, just this afternoon, I was able to create and stitch one, two, five of them of them haven't trimmed them all but i stitched them all they i mean this is probably the easiest one to see and that kind of cool any name works and i haven't popped holes in them yet they are done in the hoop just oh, um you remember them from the 80s <laughs> well i think we used to make them a long time ago in school something i remember making them with crayons and i don't know if it was I really don't remember, but we didn't have computers back then when we made them. So whenever we made them, it was really kind of cool. But I just thought these would make great little gift tags, wine holders or wine markers, glass markers for your holiday party or any, any party there, winter parties, um, gift tags, Christmas gifts, and then they can pop, you pop the hole in it, obviously, and put your ribbon around it and they can put it on their tree and have a cute little thing. I mean, well, Shirley did them in embroidery in the eighties. Well, in the 80s, embroidery didn't really come out until the 90s. So maybe, um, I'm sorry, Janice, if you can't hear. I can't do anything else and other people are hearing. So maybe you want to wait till 
um, and watch the recording. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm doing what I can. That's all I can do. So if I close the live, I can't start again. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe they need to close their the live and start again. But I, if I close, then I'm gone. <laughs> so if you want me to say goodbye, I can say goodbye. But we'll record it. If it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. So this is what we're doing. I stitched these on felt. On This is done on a scrap of a cuddle suede, which is a, a minky ultra suede type of thing. They stitch out fine. This is just done on regular twill cotton. And um, I use my Kai scissors here, trim them out, and it comes out. I will actually have two pairs of Kai scissors. I have my 5165s and my 7170s. And these I use for cutting all of my marine vinyl stuff. And they cork and whatnot because they cut out perfectly fine, like a hot knife through warm butter. So let's go over to the software and see how we we do these things. So I'm going to try switching us over here. Let's see. How do I do that? Click on the button, possibly. There we go. All right. Let me go and put this over here. Well, we'll just leave that on the side there. No one needs to, to see that. Okay, this is a sample of what this looks like uh, in the software. And you'll notice that I have a whole bunch of lettering objects that are duplicated. And then my first object is a placement stitch. And we discussed this in Denver that you need to have a placement stitch so that if you want to do multiples in your hoop and do them different colors, you can, you need a placement stitch. Whether you stitch it or not, you need the placement stitch so that you know how big of a piece of your scrap is going to fit. And I can attest that if you don't cut your fabric appropriately the right size, it doesn't finish off properly. So placement stitch is key. And then the... Last color is my bean stitch, which is a five pass bean stitch. And I have my little circle tab on the end. So let me show you how we create this. I'm going to go to a brand new design page. I'm going to use my letter A here. And in this for when I go into the in, in brilliance program, you're in single line lettering. If you're not, if you're detail, if your details, bleh. <sighs> sorry, I'm getting discombobulated here. <laughs> when you have installed the most current version of the Embrilliance platform, when you click on the lettering tool, your default is set to single line text. And that is what I used for this. So in my single line text, I'm going to type in my name. And for this name, I'm going to type in Caroline, C A. So it's C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E. Just hit the enter key. And that's what's my text in block font in a straight line. So while I have it selected here, you can choose any font that you want to use, whether it's a built-in font or a BX font. So for Caroline, I'm going to jump down to a Linny Pinny font. She has this cute little um, font called Madison. And I thought this was adorable um, as far as the, the lettering goes. You can use any of the built-in fonts, any BX fonts it is that you want. Um, at first, I'm in Essentials, yes, typing in Essentials, but I'm moving on to other programs. We're going to be using all the different programs that are going on today. So when I have my name selected, I'm going to make it as small as possible. And because I have Essentials installed, it will... Um, it has resizing, so I can resize and recalculate the number of stitches. The next step I need to do here is there's a, a feature in a sen in this, the Brilliance platform for your new pro new um, with the new update. When you right click on a lettering object, if it's a BX font, you'll be able to convert it to stitches. Now that's going to get rid of our properties pane here. So make sure that your spelling is correct and that any font is correct that you want to use. So if you wanted to say move your C down so that it's more in the center, so that it's more looking 
separately, you're going to want to make those adjustments now before you make it do anything else. Because once you get once you make it into stitches as opposed to leaving a lettering file, you can't do anything. And the reason I am going to want to go to a lettering, change it from lettering to stitches is because I don't want to get confused with all the lettering issues. I just want to, I am deciding I'm going to make a stitch file. So that's where I'm going. So I'm going to select my lettering object, right click on it and say convert to stitches. That automatically removes my whole letterings pane. And this is just a regular design, which again, I could still continue to resize it and do whatever I need to do with it. But I don't have to be confused with all those um, manipulator things for the stitches because those allow you to slide and move things around. So while I have this selected here, I'm going to, just to make things easier, I'm going to rotate it up and down. And you'll notice, I'll show you why as soon as we do that. When I click it up, when I have this selected, I'm going to rotate it so that it's going up and down here, my hoop. And the next step I'm going to take here is go to utility and choose carousel. And do you see why I wanted to choose it going up and down? because now I don't have to rotate them all individually like you do with the carousel. To make a, a snowflake, I need to, or to make a round circle, which is a snowflake, I need to make sure my width and my height of my carousel, and carousel is an enthusiast function. So I'm going to go to my width and I'm gonna type in 100. I'm gonna to go to my height and type in 100. And that may have put them a little bit too close in the center, but that's usually a good starting point from how it is that we want them to be. And you can use your up and down arrows to ooh, see how far it is that you want them to be apart. And now I'm overlapping them if you can, if you see that in the center. And we'll talk about that in a second because it's not going to create a whole bunch of blobbly blooms. Now this only has five. I'm going to choose my count six, seven. I like odd numbers and maybe I need to make this a little bit further apart. This is all live and I want to make sure it all looks like I want it to look like before I click OK. So I'm, I'm just kind of paying attention to what these curly cues are doing in the center. If I go too far out, I kind of lose some of the fun. Well, that actually is looking kind of kind of cool there. It's creating its own little little thing. If you saw with my original one, that's, this is kind of what I do with that original one here. What did I, did it, that's the center that I had here. That's sort of what I created here. Now, right now it's bigger than my four by four hoop. So if I wanted to make sure that it was going to fit my four by four hoop, I'd want to make sure, um, I made it smaller and you can do that afterwards. But right now I'm happy with it as it is. So I have seven in there. I have them rotated properly the way I want. I'm paying attention to how they're looking in the center and I'm going to click okay. Now look at your object pane. You have seven different designs that are overlapping each other. When you have multiple designs that overlap each other and you have essentials, the hidden stitches, are automatically re removed from the one above it. So the, uh, from the one below it, I'm sorry. So you're not going to have any bulk when you have these little letters overlapping each other because you have essentials installed. So we used, we're using essentials for the lettering and the sizing and the, the uh, controls, the B, the fonts itself for the carousel part. We're using enthusiast and our next step is going to go to our utility menu and click on add knockdown stitching because that's how we're going to create the outline. Because knockdown stitching basically creates a cloud shape around this whole outline. However, now I'm not, so hopefully you're you're following this. I see a thumbs up every so often. So <laughs> hopefully you're following. I use the lettering tool, carousel, knockdown. Once I have my knockdown stitch, I can go into Stitch Artist and I can go into level one 
I don't need to do anything super fancy. And I can change this into a running stitch, which is going to give me my placement stitch. So under type of stitch, I'm going to make sure it says single and it's got a stitch length of whatever it needs to be. So now I have my placement stitch that I'm going to use to stitch in my hoop on my stabilizer because that's color number one, color number, and that will allow me to place my item in my hoop. If I want to tack it down again with this same running stitch, all I need to do is select this running and go to copy and paste and change the second, first one to a different color so that my, it will stop. So that means I'll have color number one, which is a tack down or a place, yeah, positioning stitch on your stabilizer. Color number two is tacking this piece of fabric or felt, because felt is gonna be super easy for these guys. And that tacks it in place. Color number three are all your lettering objects that are going through here. But now we need our finishing stitch at the very end. So I'm gonna take this entire design that's here in the beginning and I'm gonna click on copy and paste so that it's last. But I only need one of those objects. I don't need both running stitches. I just need that one at the end. I'm gonna change my stitch type to a bean stitch and make sure you can say it's a three pass or a five pass, whatever it is that you wanted. I've done both. This original David one, this was a regular, that was just a bean stitch with five passes. Caroline was a bean stitch with five passes. William was a stem stitch. I don't know if you can see him. It's just a little bit different type of stitch. A either type of stitch you want. I just thought that the, the bean stitch was a nice classic look. Doesn't take too long. Mm. And now we have our outlining stitch that is finishing off our little snowflake here. But we need to create this little tab thing here. So while I'm in Stitch Artist, I'm going to go to my little fly out here. And I'm going to click on the circle because I want to create a circle. I'm going to click, hold, and drag. And I am just going to create a small circle and you'll want to maybe measure it or pay attention to what the size of this is. Right now it's about 10, uh, 10 millimeters around. So that might be a little bit, um, um, actually that's not too bad of a size, 10 millimeters. That's about, maybe it's a little, little small. I'm looking at what the, my size is on this guy here. And that's about 10 millimeters. It's going across here. Make my circle, and this one has, I would like to, it to be a satin stitch so that it is just finishing up here. If you wanted it to be a bean stitch to match, you're more than welcome to do that. But I just did a little satin stitch, and I'm going to take my little hole punch and pop it through when I'm done. I have to find my hole punch. It's in my sewing room here somewhere. Okay, but I have my circle here, and I need to place it where my... I'm going to move my start and my stop up to the, to this point here because I don't want to have any jump stitches. So I'm moving my start and stop to this point. I'm going to select my little guy here, move him over on top of this. I'm going to select it and I'm just going to uh, rotate it around so that my start and stop are right on top of the other ones. I noticed that for some reason it decided to get added to the top one, it doesn't need to be there, so I'm going to command X it out of there. I'm going to add it to the last one at the back here. And I'm going to say um, command V. Does that paste it in the right spot? No, it keeps going into that one. Ugh, delete. I have to set this as my, per my uh, current design. So I'm going to go to the create menu and choose design and say set current design. And now I'm going to paste it in there. Command V. Theoretically, it puts it at the bottom here. And it's all set up perfectly fine. Could you use an eyelet stitch from Stitch Artist? Uh, yes, it, but that's in Stitch Artist 3. So Stitch Artist level 1 doesn't have that option, so I didn't put it. Um, but yes, if you have the eyelet in Stitch Artist 3, that would be 
I think that's in Stitch Artist 3 anyway. French knot. Boom. Eyelet single. Oh, yeah, but you wouldn't want it to be that small, that big. Make it smaller. Oops. Well, you get what I mean. It's, my mouse is misbehaving because of this weather that we're having here. Eee. I have a curve. There we go. I don't know what it's doing there. My curve is doing weird things. You're going to want to, yes, you'd create your eyelet. Mm. We're just going to delete that perfectly. Stitch art is, that's level three though. And now it's showing it with level one. Level one is easy enough to draw your circle um, using the new flyout. That's a part of the program. Wow. Hopefully that, yeah, when my computer starts doing that miss, um, that jumping around, I hope that doesn't mean that you guys are missing blocks of information because that's what happened last time. And I see we have a storm coming in. That's the problem about working at nighttime on lives. <laughs> the storms come in in Colorado at the, at the end of the day. So this, um, basically the steps that you're taking to create this is you're typing your name and choosing your font. You can use a built-in font or you can use a BX font. I choose to convert to stitches simply because um, I don't want to have all the adjusters in my lettering tool. I want to have them just be stitches. There's no reason for me to edit text while I have these guys created. Once I have um, my name done, in my lettering tab, I rotate it 90 degrees so that it's up and down. Go to enthusiast where it says utility and choose carousel. Make my circle round so that it's like a start with a hundred and go from there, but you want both numbers to be the same. Choose how many you want to have in there, adjust the spacing, make it live. Once it's live, click okay and you have what it is that you want. Add your underlay and go to Stitch Artist so that you can create your placements and your um, uh, tack down stitches. Okay, fly out. Okay, Fran, you were supposed to go and read the um, blog post on the Embrilliance website for the news. That is this new feature that's in the um, in the um, most current version of the update. It's also listed in your manual. So if you went to the, got the new manual version, this says it's a shape mode and it allows you to, uh, click out. It's a fly out so that you can, um, create shapes. And I chose a circle one from the fly out. So if you don't have this feature in your program, you need to go download the current update. So, um, so you're making these tags for Christmas. Yes. They're going to be great. Uh, yes, Joe Rita, convert to stitches prevents you from making another mistake. Absolutely, because we made lots of those in class. <laughs> it was, I didn't want to have to deal with it. Uh, so they put that in the current version so that, because when, once you convert to stitches at this point, um, you want to, you're not uh, editing text. So there's no reason to keep the lettering properties. Um, the question from, from Marin is, do you put a backing on these to cover the stitches? Yes, that is what this last bean stitch is. So after it, the name color stitches, so all this, these names stitch and color, the next color that stitches is the um, bean stitch. Before that stitches, I slide my fabric under my hoop, make sure it's covering all the stitches so you don't have an oopsie. And it stitches the bean stitch all the way around. And then it stitches the little uh, fly on the, um, the fly little circle on the, um, for the whole punchy thing. Wow. See, this is what happens when I teach, when I, <laughs> I do one of these at late at nighttime, I lose my words, lose my words. Thank you, Eric, for posting the, the current update information. Um, all, there's so many new features in the new update. And if you want to read just about the features, you need to go to the news blog on the Embrilliance website. Um, if you, uh, Regina, if you don't have the, if you have the beta version, you don't have convert to stitches. That's because you need a new version. The update was just posted this morning, I think, or yesterday. There, um, you need to get the new one <laughs> because it was something that was just added. 
uh, added into there. And as soon as you do that, you will have that convert to stitches. Now, when you use a built-in font, whoops, I didn't have, let me go to a, a new design page, lettering tool, boom. When you use one of the built-in fonts, so let me type in um, just happy. When you right click on this and you have Stitch Artist level three, you have convert to objects as well as convert to stitches. Now, when you use convert to objects, that means that you can ha you can actually redigitize these if you wanted to say expand it or add doohickeys and cre uh, create new. Um, stitches here, uh, new digitized letters for it. it. You can use the convert to objects and that's in Stitch Artist 3. Convert to stitches gets rid of all those little center, all the lettering adjustments. So the point is once you create all of your letters that you want in the font you want, with the spacing you want, with slant and every blah, 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 you want to um, make sure that you convert to stitches and then you don't, you won't have those options anymore, but that means you're doing something else like uh, that holiday, which was the video from last week. And in the project blog that was using convert to stitches. Um, yes, Sue, I'm glad you got the new beta version, but um, you got the new update yesterday after trying the beta version. So Kathy asked, do you recommend in saving placement as SVG to cut front and back fabric? Sure. If you want to uh, pre-cut them, That'd be great. It was something that I did sitting here at the computer, just cutting it with my scissors. So I didn't, didn't have a need to, um, uh, cut them with my, with my fabric cutter because I cut them around. You can see I got pretty darn close. Well, there's some fuzzies on that, but, um, I wasn't very careful on that one. This one looks better. Nice and close. And that's because I was using my Kai scissors. Love my Kai scissors. These are the 7170s. And if anyone's interested, because in, you're looking for scissors, the reason I like the Kai scissors is because they hold their edge for a long, long time. And I'm using mine all the time. And I have a couple pairs that are close to 12, 13, 14 years old. And this, the edges, the they still cut just as well as they did before. I went and splurged because... I'm worth it. <laughs> and I upgraded, um, I got the professional level. These are the 7170s. Is that what it is? 7170. Oh my God. These are like so smooth. And they cut through when I was cutting through the cork. And this is two layers of cork because I put one the top and one the bottom. That when I tried my regular scissors, they cut fine, but these were just like zing. <laughs> but yes, if you wanted to cut these with a cutting machine, because you have the a cutting machine. Select the first placement stitch and cut an inflation value. So maybe one and a half, two, three millimeters so that it cuts it a little bit bigger because you're going to want to place it right on there. Um, and make sure you're going to have to, I would use a light box so that when you're placing this, it's actually even right on top because you, with scissors, you can make sure that all your lines are even. But if you weren't that great on lining your stuff up, you're going to have a kind of, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> if you've ever pre-cut something with an inflation and you don't put it straight on the line, some of it's sticking out on one side and not on the other side. So I find that if I use my light box, I have one of those daylight wafer tablet things. I got it at a quilt show. It was on sale. And um, that I use that to shine through my hoop and place my item directly, directly on top so that it's there. Okay, I don't see any more questions coming in. So either we lost lost connection here <laughs> or we're all theirs. Um, uh, we're all in awe because this is actually kind of fun. Like I said, I made five of these today and stitched them out. Uh, scrap fabrics works great. What's nice is that even when you go through, um, because they're individual lettering objects, which are individual designs that are overlapping each other in your object pane. Remove hidden stitches removes the clumpies. So when you look at this under the, um, yeah, you'd have a wonky snowflake if, um, hold on, I switched over and I didn't switch over. Hold on, I'm trying to switch. 
switch, switch, switch. Okay. When you look at this and you go to, um, I have density as when you have stitch artist or density repair kit installed, stitch artist has the density map as well. You can actually see that there's not a whole bunch of, um, there's obviously a lot of red stitches because of the stitch type that I chose going around the edge, but that's just what's going to happen. It's stitched perfectly fine because I didn't have a single thread break in this, but with your letters that are, um, overlapping each other here, that's only a little teeny, teeny, teeny bit of red. It's not, it's not causing any problems whatsoever. So, um, you'll have, don't, because they are, um, because the remove hidden stitches got rid of anything extra, that little tiny red bit's not going to cause a problem. You're going to have to have some. It doesn't do a cookie cutter. If it did, you'd have gaps, and we don't want gaps. So it's always a, just kind of a nice check to um, see where your stitches are. And uh, I did a whole bunch of them. Too much fun. Fun, fun, fun. Mary thinks they're cute. I think they're cute, too. I think everyone should be making these. I mean, just think if you're going to, um, if you're having a party at your house, we're doing Christmas Eve dinner. And guess who? Guess what? Everyone's getting one of these around their wine glass. And then they get to take it home. Um, we don't have to worry about using the Sharpie marker. Why did I do five pass instead of three pass? So oh, because I wanted a thicker, heavier look. I think I, on the first, I don't know. It's a choice. <laughs> um, it, it depends on this, on how many, how, how heavy you want it to look and what fabric you're stitching it on. This one, um, I was stitching this on, it's like an ultra suede type fabric. And I was afraid that a three pass was going to get kind of sucked in because this is very soft. I don't know if you can see the texture on this. It's almost like a, um, it's fuzzy. It's ultra suede. So I, I just wanted to make sure five pass would be a little heavier. You could try three pass. Why not? One, two, and take that much longer stitch out. I just, based upon other things that I've made, that's what I had done. Sue wants to know what stitch length am I using for the bean stitch? Oh, what did I, oh, what? Oh, whoopsie. Well, that's not good. Oh. Yikes. Have mess. Mess on the thing. Um, what stitch length? Um, I'm usually between a 2.5 between two and 2.5 stitches. Yes. Uh, for my stitch length, because I want to have it go uh, curves around the edges. Uh, great for a child gift for school friends. All the grandkids will have them for Christmas. I know great gift tags, just something that they can keep. You can add a little date in the center. I don't know if you can see this one. I put, um, my, um, uh, granddaughter's monogram in the center, but you could easily put a date in the center. And then you would have, um, that's this year's gift. And then you could do the same thing next year. Eesh, I was not, I have a weird stitch sticking out of this guy here. Crazy, crazy. Okay. Um, hopefully you guys found that entertaining, exciting. Um, it's a lot of fun. I'd love to see all you guys post your photos of them. Tell people how great it was. Uh, make sure you, uh, have some fun. I did put some information on this. Um, if you don't have any of the Brilliance programs, they do give me a promo code. So if you go to the um, sew bubbles or sew dash bubbles.com, great for craft fairs. Yes, but you might want to do something like, um, unless you're doing stitching on the fly. And I'll tell you, um, each one of these takes about 30 minutes to stitch out. Probably some of them took longer. I'm trying to remember one of them took, William took the longest to stitch out and he was about 43 minutes, I think. So they, they aren't fast stitch outs. It depends on the font that you're choosing because you're doing the same name seven, eight, nine times around. Most of them, let's see, I, I usually choose even odd numbers, I think. Yes. So I think I did seven for all of mine. <laughs> some of them I have nine. So anyway, Let's see if you wanted, remember that you always can have, I have to use this guy here. I can't find my, my mouse pad is kind of wet at the moment. B U E L E S dot C O M slash back F B L I V E. That's my, that's my website. And that has the links on there. Um, you can't do this if you have essentials. That's the question. Well, 
you can copy paste and rotate the name around but you can't add a um 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 the stitching that makes the the tag you can trim it if you stitch it on felt it's not going to fray and then just make it a little bit bigger on one size and and have fun with that um but as far as all the the stitching objects goes like the outline bean stitch that's all stitch artist so you can Essentials, you can just copy, paste, and rotate and move them around. Enthusiast adds the knockdown stitching, which automatically draws the, changes the knockdown into the bean stitch or the running stitch, placement stitch. It also adds the little eyelet at the top. And uh, Joe Rita's, oh, Anna says, craft shows with Christmas. Yes, Pete's typing in Pete's Joy holiday, a school mascot names going around, doing them in school colors. I mean, because mm, each one's a design. So you, if you did seven, you can do them alternating colors. So uh, yellow, gold, yellow, gold, rotate them around if that was the, the color. Lots of fun stuff. Um, so hopefully you found this exciting. I'm going to go and walk my dogs. And just remember this is recorded so you can watch it again later. I think I posted the link to uh, the Facebook Live page, which has the Kai Scissor link that shows you the scissors I use. It also has the link to my affiliate link page with my discount code in case anyone's interested in upgrading or adding new software to the package. And I look forward to seeing you online next week. Also, remember, I am day one of... Chicago. If anyone's interested in coming to the Chicago classes, they're in September. Day one is um, over half sold out. So it usually within the next three weeks, we're going to get lots of people. And day one is always the first to go. So if you're in the Chicago area or looking to come to the hands-on class, that's the last one I'm doing here in the United States. I will be in uh, Brisbane, Australia in November. Check with Echidna Sewing Products information. The link is on my website under education as well. I know a lot of the sessions have already sold out. You're going to, if you get on the waiting list or see what you can do with them, see if you are in Australia and you would like to go. And I had a lovely time tonight. Take care. Have fun. Thanks for joining me.